Greetings to you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, dear radio and TV friends of Divine Mercy Radio Television. You are welcome to another edition of Know Your Faith on Divine Mercy Radio Television. This day, we are presently at the Regina Patches Cathedral, Small Support, and today's focus shall be on the impeded or vacant sea. His Lordship Michael Baby will have taken us through this. We shall have two sessions of teachings. Thereafter, we shall have one session for questions and answers. We're going to call on Reverend Father Hilary Ngome to give us an opening prayer before the bishop takes on today's catechesis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I help you in the name of the Lord. God our Father in heaven, we want to thank you this day. This day you made your own. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of the life of our Bishop, Michael Bibi, who has come up with this wonderful idea of teaching us doctrine and giving us catechesis at the level of the diocese. We ask you, Lord, to be with him and to be with us. We send our Holy Spirit to us that we're able to assimilate so that we'll be able to put into practice all what we are going to learn today. This we ask through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So my dear people of God, we are going to look at what the church calls impeded sea. Also, the vacancy, the impeded vacancy, and of course, when we are talking about impeded vacancy, we are referring to a situation where the bishop is not there, and uh, we we'll begin by talking about an impede impeded. To impede in someone from or or something from happening and when we talk about an impeded sea it means that the sea is actually occupied but the person who occupies the sea is not able is incapable of exercising his function due to circumstances preventing him from doing so. And of course, the Code of Canon Law in Canon 412 gives us cases that we can refer to as impeded sea. The case of imprisonment. If the bishop is in prison. The case of banishment. The case of exile. Or incapacity. An incapacity would mean physical or psychological infirmity which makes it impossible for the bishop concerned to place acts that are juridically valid. So when the sea is impeded, therefore, the bishop of the particular sea does not have access to the diocese cannot communicate with the diocese. 
in a, in a situation like that, what happens? Canon 413 of the Code of Canon Law tells us that in the absence of the bishop that has been impeded, the co adjutor bishop acts in his absence. If the co adjutor is not in that diocese, the auxiliary bishop acts in his absence. If there is no auxiliary bishop, the vicar general, and if the vicar general too is not available, the episcopal vicar. And if there is no episcopal vicar, one of the priests from the list of three priests that the bishop would normally send through the nuncio to Rome for proposals concerning appointment as bishop, one of the priests, the first choice that was proposed should be the one to handle the pastoral care of the diocese within a period of that nature. And it is important for us to also note that in situations in which the see is impeded because the proper bishop is not available for one reason or the other, it is important that the one who assumes the pastoral care of the diocese make sure that he fulfills the obligations that he is supposed to fulfill. And the person that has been chosen is equivalent to what the church calls a diocesan administrator. And of course, the diocesan administrator or the person who is taking care of the diocese at that particular moment, that very person who cease to carry out the function that he has been given to take care of the diocese if the proper bishop is free and comes back and is able to communicate with people in his diocese. There may also be a situation that Canon 415 mentions that may occur because a bishop is under a canonical sanction. When a bishop is under a canonical sanction, he is deprived of the power of governance. And of course, this is also a case of incapacity to govern due to a sanction that the Holy See has imposed on the bishop. But unlike in the cases above, it is important for us to note that the law simply requires that Rome be informed so that it makes provision for a diocesan administrator. The other case is a case of a vacant sea. We have spoken about an impeded sea. Now I want to talk about a vacant sea. The Episcopal See becomes vacant by the death of the diocesan bishop. By the resignation accepted by the Holy See. By transfer or by a deprivation 
notified to the bishop. When we say the sea is vacant, it means that there is no bishop in that diocese. Unlike the case of the impeded sea, where there is a bishop, but the bishop cannot function because he cannot communicate with his people. And of course, we know situations that when a sea is vacant, normally there are two options. There may be an option of the College of Consultors members selecting one of the elderly priests of the diocese and giving him the authority to take care of the diocese while they wait for an appointment to be made. Once a see is vacant, either by the death of the bishop, either because the bishop has tendered in his resignation to the Holy See, either because he has been uh, transferred to another diocese, the function of the vicar general ceases because the vicar general is attached to the person of the bishop. The presbyteral council ceases. It is only the college of consultors that remains functional and of course the chancellor also remains functional. And that is why among the members of the College of Consultors, they can decide and propose a priest who is sound in doctrine, who is sound in morality, that the priest should be able to hold the fort of the diocese while the Holy See is looking for the possibility of replacing someone as far as the particular see is concerned. And of course, Canon 428 will mention that somebody who is a diocesan administrator, who is elected by the members of the College of Consultors, and who can also be elected by the Metropolitan. The Metropolitan is the head, the, the head, the person who is the head of the ecclesiastical province. He can appoint a diocesan administrator just as the members of the College of Consultors can do that appointment. And of course, when they do that appointment, they can communicate the Holy Father. And the Holy Father, you know, the Vatican will know that this is what has happened. We are talking about a diocesan administrator. And Canon 428 says that the diocesan administrator has no powers to change anything as far as the life of the diocese is concerned. If the see is vacant, when there was a co-adjutor bishop who has a right to succession, automatically the co-adjutor bishop takes over. If the see is vacant, when there was an uh, auxiliary bishop, automatically the auxiliary bishop who's the fort waiting for the appointment of the bishop. And at the same time, the Holy Father now, in a situation of a vacancy, can appoint an apostolic administrator. Apostolic administrator is appointed by the Holy Father. And the apostolic administrator acts or governs the diocese following the instructions that is given to him by the Holy Father. And in the case of an apostolic administrator, it's different from a diocesan administrator. Because you hear some people say Canon 428 says that a diocesan administrator should not change. Apostolic administrator should not change. No! The apostolic administrator is always appointed 
by the Holy Father. What we say, ad nutum sancte sedis. And he is acting on behalf of the Holy Father. And of course, with an apostolic administrator, he is giving some instructions as far as the governance or the administration of the diocese is concerned. When we talk about a vacancy, it is also important for us to note that in the case of getting somebody to sit in or somebody to become a diocesan administrator, the church mentions that the person must have reached 35 years. So just like the appointment of a bishop, you are expected to reach 35 years. The same holds good when it comes to the appointment of a diocesan administrator. And of course, it will also hold good when it comes to the appointment of the apostolic administrator. When we come back, we are going to continue. see we are going to move on to the second part of our doctrine today which is going to deal with groupings of particular churches and here we are talking about what we call ecclesiastical provinces or what we can also call 
ecclesiastical grouping. But there's a difference between the two. And uh, when we talk about an ecclesiastical province, what do we mean? We are referring to a situation where dioceses are grouped together because of their cultural heritage, because they have the same way of doing things, because they have the same understanding as far as the people of that particular area is concerned. And uh, when we talk about an ecclesiastical province, it is this grouping that one of the dioceses there becomes what we call the metropolitan see. And the metropolitan is the one who has authority over the ecclesiastical province. Uh, the Code of Canon Law gives provision also that if an ecclesiastical province following the recommendation of the National Episcopal Conference, these provinces can also be made into what we call ecclesiastical regions. And what about ecclesiastical regions? What do we mean? We mean like the fusion of two ecclesiastical provinces. If, for instance, the ecclesiastical province of Douala and the one of Bamenda, they are joined together, they become an ecclesiastical region because of the fusion of two ecclesiastical provinces. But I think that our main concern here is to highlight and talk more about the ecclesiastical province. Uh, we know, of course, in our own area, beginning from uh, Kumbu to Bamenda, to Mamfe, to Kumba, and to Boya, that is the Ecclesiastical Province of Bamenda. And as far as the Ecclesiastical Province of Bamenda is concerned, the Archbishop presently is Archbishop Andrew Mkea. And he is the one sitting at the Metropolitan See. And as far as his functions are concerned, he is supposed to make sure that as far as the province is concerned, you know, the faith of the people in this province, and at the same time, all ecclesiastical disciplines that are supposed to be observed, observe that is supposed to be done and done properly. If the Holy Father deems it necessary, he can also have the opportunity to conduct what we call a canonical visitation as far as the province is concerned. And at the same time, he has the power to appoint what we call a diocesan administrator. We already mentioned in other catechetical sessions that when an archbishop is appointed, he is supposed to, after his ordination, within three months to request for the pallium, the symbol of authority in an ecclesiastical province. And at the same time, we had also, also mentioned that the archbishop can only wear the pallium within the ecclesiastical province where he has authority. He cannot wear the pallium if he goes to another province. And at the same time, if he is transferred from that province where he is archbishop and sent to another province where he is still archbishop, he has to request for a new pallium. He has to request for a new pallium and keep the old one aside and use a new one, and he can use a new one now where he is archbishop. And if he comes back to his former province, he can never use the pallium there again, because obviously there will be another uh, metropolitan who is taking care of the province. And even if he were to go to another province, and the bishop there is very generous and asks him to put on his pallium, 
he will refuse because he has no authority over the people of God in that area. And within the ecclesiastical province where you are archbishop, you can carry out functions in the different dioceses as if they were in your own proper diocese. And I think that is very important for us to note. But if you are to preside at the cathedral church, you cannot do that without talking with the bishop on the spot. And the metropolitan, though he has a authority over the ecclesiastical province, he has no administrative powers over each of the suffragan dioceses. Which means that he cannot decide what will happen in Kumba. Or decide what will happen in Boya. No. It is a bishop of Kumba that decides on how to manage his diocese. Because in the case of a diocesan bishop, the diocesan bishop manages the diocese in his name. Not on behalf of the Holy Father. The apostolic administrator manages on behalf of the Holy Father. But the bishop manages on his own behalf. So the suffragan dioceses, that's how they call different dioceses under the province. The bishops there have their own power that they use to decide on issues. But when we meet, for instance, in our provincial meetings in February, we always meet in Bamenda, and in August we move from one diocese to the other within the province, we decide on common policies, common pastoral policies, in order to help our church. We take, for instance, the provincial, provincial plan. It's decided by the province. That is the only document that we are going to use as far as evangelization is concerned. And the implementation of the provincial pastoral plan is an obligation as far as this province is concerned. All the bishops, before we ever became bishops, they had approved it. And we too are just following in their footsteps. It is within the context then of the provincial meetings that we have that we can say for this particular thing let us do like this let us do like this let us do like this but when we have agreed all of us we're expecting now to implement those things in our different dioceses but in the different dioceses there are also certain things that the bishop together with his own presbyterium and the Christians, they can decide certain things for the good of the church in that province. So in the Republic of Cameroon, we have five ecclesiastical provinces. We have five ecclesiastical provinces. We have spoken about the first one, which is Bamenda. Bamenda is a metropolitan see. And the Archbishop of Bamenda is Andrew Nkea. The Bishop of Kumbu, George Mkuo. The Bishop of Manfe, Aloysius Fondong. The Bishop of Kumba, Agabitus Fon. And the Bishop of Boya, my humble self. You go to the next province. We can take the province of Douala. And the Metropolitan Archbishop of Douala is somewhere Cleda. Then, which are the different suffragan dioceses? that fall under Douala. We can go and begin from Bafusan. Bishop Paul Lonsi, the Bishop of Bafusan. Then, of course, we come right up to the Diocese of uh, Bafang. Bafang. Then, of course, we have the Diocese of uh, Nkongsamba. We have the Diocese of uh, Edea. We have the Diocese of Eseka. Those are the dioceses that fall under Douala. Then we can move now from Douala and we go to Yaoundé. We go to Yaoundé, we have the Diocese of Kribi. We have the Diocese of Ebolova. The Diocese of Mbamayo. The Diocese of San Malima. We have the Diocese of Yaoundé itself. We have the Diocese of Obala. We have the Diocese of Bafia. Those are the dioceses that will constitute Yaoundé. 
then you go to the province of Betwa. And when you go to the province of Betwa, you have Betwa itself, and then you have Ndume Abombang, you have Baturi, and you have Yokaduma. Then you go to the province of uh, Garwa. And the province of Garwa, you have Yagwa, you have Marwa Mokolo, you have Garwa itself, and you have Ngaundere, making the total to be 26 dioceses in Cameroon, grouped under five different ecclesiastical provinces. And as I mentioned already, all these ecclesiastical provinces, they meet within the course of the year to discuss issues and things pertaining to their province, to decide on common policies that can help them as far as the functioning of their province is concerned. This said, we come to the end of our presentation today, and uh, next week we'll be in uh, St. Martin the Poorest Parish in Likumba. We are going to talk about diocesan Curia. En ce qui concerne et aussi uh, Ezeka, à, à la province ecclésiastique de Yaoundé, nous avons le diocèse de Kribi, Ebolova, Balmayo, Sangmelima, Yaoundé, Bafia et Obala. En ce qui concerne en troisième position, nous avons uh, le dieu, la province ecclésiastique de Betwa, où nous avons le diocèse de Betwa même, le diocèse de Domé en Bomang, le diocèse de Baturi et le diocèse de Yokaduma. Et nous avons aussi la province ecclésiastique de Garoua, qui constitue Garoua même, le diocèse de Garoua même, le diocèse de Yagwa, le diocèse de Marwa Mokolo et le diocèse de Ngaoundere. Voici qui, voilà ce qui constitue des différentes provinces ecclésiastiques du Cameroun. Voilà ce qui fait le sommet de cette deuxième partie. Nous aurons une interlude musical et ensuite nous, nous allons passer à la phase questions et réponses. Let us have a brief musical interlude and thereafter we shall move to the question and answer session. back dear tv friend if you're just tuning in you're on to know your faith on divine mercy radio television and we have moved to the question and answer session for those of you watching us on your screens you can post your questions via sms or whatsapp on the numbers which you find on your screen or leave us a question on the comment section on facebook for those of us here present in the church remember we took over some questions last session so if we're here for previous session we're going to be taking your questions and you can also take questions on today's uh, topic so you just raise your hand and then we'll bring the microphone closer to you just raise your hand and we'll bring the microphone closer to you for you to ask your questions thank you my lord i want to find out you told us about the ecclesiastical province now i want to find out the conditions that the diocese that is named the metropolitan whether they call it the metropolitan see or what i don't know uh, the conditions that the particular diocese meets before it is done. And who chooses? My Lord Bishop, we thank you for the presentation. 
and for making yourself to be available in this our own cathedral, which is your own compound and the main church in the Diocese of Boya. We are privileged. How I wish we continue this every week. How I wish this presentation is done only here so that more meaning will be given to this cathedral. Thank you, my Lord. I have about five questions. Okay, two. I want to like know from our bishop If you are a bishop emeritus, emeritus and you died, you'll be buried inside the church, the uh, other bishop. Question number two. Now, we are in Cameroon and we have the nuncio. How come, what are the conditions that are always there to make us have this nuncio? Thank you, my Lord. Then uh, number three, how is a cardinal of a country choosing? Because I know we had a cardinal and now it's like there is no cardinal in Cameroon. How is a cardinal choosing? And then question number four, when the bishops of Cameroon come together, what really, which are the qualities that make somebody a president? Thank you. My Lord, we have more than three questions. Maybe we'll begin answering those ones. Uh, what are the conditions that a particular diocese meets before becoming a metropolitan and who chooses? The Diocese of Boya was erected on the 18th of April, 1950. And uh, 20 years after, in uh, 1970, the Diocese of uh, Bamenda was erected. And in 1982, 32 years after the existence of Boya, the Holy Father made uh, the Metropolitan See and the bishop there became the Archbishop at the same time creating the Diocese of Kumbo with territories detached from the Archdiocese of Bamenda. I think that as far as the procedures and the process of making the Metropolitan See is concerned, it is the, at the level of the National Episcopal Conference. It's at the level of the non CHO because they give the practical provisions as far as the partitioning is concerned, and that is sent to the Holy Father. And of course, after studying too, if the Holy Father is all right with it, then it is made the Metropolitan, the metropolitan uh, C. That's what I can say as far as that is concerned. Uh, if a bishop emeritus dies, will he be buried in the cathedral? That's a bishop emeritus behind there. He died, he was buried. So any bishop, whether if I die tomorrow, the next space there, people should hear where. If I die tomorrow, the next how I, me, you dig my own there too, you keep me there. Is that okay? So, any bishop who dies can be buried in the cathedral. Look at Cardinal Tumi when he died, he was emeritus. He was buried in the cathedral too in Duala. As far as the nuncio is concerned, you know, the church also have ministries. Like uh, the Catholic Church is a state, and as a state, they also have the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and uh, the nuncios are ambassadors that are sent to different countries to represent the Holy Father. 
That's why the Catholic Church is different from every other church. Because in Cameroon, the Catholic Church, we the ministers of God, even though citizens of Cameroon, we are also citizens of the Vatican. So, it is important for us to know that as far as there's a diplomatic school in Rome where, you know, priests are sent to go and do diplomacy as far as becoming nuncios and all the rest is concerned. So, there are priests from Africa, there are priests from Europe, there are priests from America, all over the continent, you know, who are applying and the, the bishops send them to those schools and they do a lot of work there while they are there and all the rest, they send them as secretary generals to different non churches all over the world. And uh, if tomorrow uh, there is a need for a non then the minister in charge of foreign affairs, you know, will be able now to give the proposals to the Holy Father. And of course, the Holy Father will appoint. Uh, in one of the doctrines already, we talk about a cardinal. Every country must not have a cardinal. It is the Holy Father who decides to appoint anybody a cardinal. It is his choice. So the fact that we had a cardinal in Cameroon, and now he is of blessed memory, is not automatic that there will be another cardinal in Cameroon. And then, of course, the qualities that make one president of the National Episcopal Conference in, in Cameroon. We know ourselves. Once you're already a bishop, there were qualities that they were looking for before they made you a bishop. And among the bishops, we decide, you know, who we think that will be our president. We do election. We do election. And when we have the election, we have to suggest about three names. We do the voting. Sometimes the voting is tight. We come back to square zero. And we do the person that has the majority of the vote, you know, becomes the president. So any bishop is eligible to become the president of the National Episcopal Conference. My Lord, the second question is linked to the first May I find out if there can be two archdioceses in a single metropolis? So, you've made mention of impeded C, your part one, and vacant C, giving some outlines on how some of them futures. I'm interested to know about the Vatican. The Emiratus Pope or Bishop Benedict XVI, in what category did he fall under impeded sea or vacancy before Pope Francis took over him? That is first part of the question. The next part of that same question, it is the first time in history an existing pope, as I read from an extract, an edition, an active pope buries another pope. In your own point of view, Your Excellency, do you look at Pope Francis to be of the same footing like his predecessor, Pope Benedict, who has taken a seat and is gradually occupying the same standards like getting to the wheelchair? Is it like his other successor will come and then he goes like Pope Benedict the Sixteenth? That is the other part of my question, part one. Get into part two of your presentation concerning exegetical provinces and exegetical groupings. I wish to ask in relation to this, what makes 
a diocese, an ash diocese, and does it automatically, makes the acting bishop like you is here in Boya Diocese to become an automatic archbishop. So I don't know if that question is clear for you, but it goes in that direction. I'll come back again. Thank you. Good morning, my lord. I am John Clovis Alekavi. My lord, I have two questions to ask. The first is uh, when an apostolic administrator is appointed and he is the ruling bishop in a different diocese is he permitted to stay in the diocese where he is an apostolic administrator secondly when he is an administrator in that diocese as you said he ruled the diocese in the name of the holy father is he uh, uh, given the mandate to hold his crosia facing the people who facing himself thank you my lord we're going to pause here for the bishop to answer those questions, and thereafter we shall take the next round of questions. Yeah, before I answer, there was a comment that I didn't comment on about having catechesis only at the cathedral in order to give the cathedral its rightful place. I don't think anybody has taken away the right of the cathedral. And uh, if the bishop is going to other places, it's because you can also come to the cathedral for life. What about the other people who want to see the bishop? Can we afford to be selfish? We cannot afford to be selfish. So as the bishop comes here, last year I was here, last month, uh, Monday I was here, today I'm here. So at least it's good to, to go to other places. But I'll try to be coming here frequently so that uh, uh, you, you feel me more. <laughs> uh, can there be two archdioceses in the same ecclesiastical province? No. We already talk about an archdiocese. It means that it's a metropolitan see. So you cannot have a true metropolitan. You want a met metropolitan see, it should be created if the church sees a need. So like now we are talking about Bamenda, we are under Bamenda, we're in the Ecclesiastical province of Bamenda, and there are five dioceses. There are five dioceses in Bamenda. If uh, tomorrow, maybe another diocese is created, after another diocese is created, created maybe if we are eight, maybe we are nine, or if we are ten dioceses, the church may also decide now to make another diocese to become a metropolitan see. Then they'll divide it into two. That we cannot have uh, two metropolitans, uh, two archdioceses in the same ecclesiastical province. The head of every ecclesiastical province is an archbishop. Mm -hmm. Then about the Vatican concerning Pope Benedict XVI, I don't give my opinion. I give the teaching of the church. The fact that Benedict the uh, resigned, uh, it's not automatic that Francis will resign. And when I teach doctrine, I teach the teaching of the church. I don't give my personal opinion. So I will not give my personal opinion as far as that is concerned. But when Pope Francis resigned, the see was vacant. And at that time, he was the one who was in charge, you know, working very close to, the, the, he was the head of the cardinals and all the rest. He handed the affairs until the other election took place and he was elected. They would have said elected another person, but he was elected. And in, he lived his life as a, a, a Pope, Pope St. John Paul II, he worked right to the end and he didn't resign. Pope uh, Benedict XVI worked and saw that the body was not strong again. He said, now I'm going to resign. Let another person take over. 
So let's see what Pope Francis has for us too. About uh, an active Pope bearing an emeritus. As I say, those are things that nobody decides upon them. It's just normal that uh, if uh, the Pope had died, you know, before the elections and all the rest, he would have still been buried, but not by the person, not by the present Pope, because at that time the elections had not yet taken place. But there's absolutely nothing wrong in an active Pope burying an emeritus Pope. Uh, one makes a diocese an archdiocese. What a Christian. <laughs> uh, a diocese becomes an archdiocese if the Holy Father decides to make it an archdiocese following the recommendations that have been sent to him by his representative in the country. And once it's made an, made an archdiocese, there is a metropolitan that is appointed. And of course, if he's made an archdiocese and there's a bishop in that diocese, that is a choice to become the archbishop, automatically the bishop becomes the archbishop. If he's made when the bishop in that diocese, the thing otherwise that he shouldn't be the archbishop, they will appoint the archbishop and the other bishop will be transferred to another place. So there's nothing wrong. It's not automatic that because uh, you are the bishop of uh, Tukumbere, then decide to make Tukumbere archdiocese, it's not automatic that it must be you. Because there are investigations, investigations too that are done in order to find out who will be the archbishop. And at the same time, names are given for those that they think that they can take that position. So the church always has these procedures that they follow in order to make sure that when the Holy Father is appointing someone, he appoints someone that the groundwork has been adequately done. Any other question? I just want some clarifications and, and others may also want those clarifications. And uh, use the word pile. Some people may not, the term may be too high for others, we need some clarification. And then the importance of pile. And then in the vacant administrator, the minimum age indicated is 35 years. And you just ordain uh, someone, a, new, a newly ordained priest that was uh, done a few weeks ago. He's 35 years. Does it mean that he's also eligible to be a, a vacant administrator? Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. I'm Valerie Safi. I have a question, two questions to, an, to ask. The first one is, as you rightly presented the church organigram, I wish to know if in the absence of the bishop, any of them can administer the sacrament of confession and holy orders. Or, a, or another bishop can come from a different diocese to do that in case of miscellaneous. Secondly, if can, what are the conditions that hold for the fact that the, in the impeded, in the impeded sea, that the bishop will be present and he is not communicating with the, Christ, with the Christian in the diocese? My Lord, I want to ask and say, I want to go The parliament where Archbishop the Wereham, you say when he want to go out, like for other parishes, so other diocese, he not be Wereham, he will move and keep him. When you go for that diocese, they recognize, they recognize him like who? Yes, yeah, so that, uh, that parliament where we talk about, it being, uh, if you look, Archbishop Tanway were close. After I crossed, like, did my own. He crossed the day on top chasuble. We all bishop them as well. Then after that one, continue to put on his neck. You know, that they call him, say, pallium. Mm -hmm. And they call him, say, pallium. All we get phone now, we, we walk with phone them. We go search pallium. P A L L I U M. You search them. I think they'll show you the picture. 
and they'll be able for to give you the explanation for day. So I think that what we talk as far as the uh, parliament may be concerned and just link our equation with Pa ask and the year. Uh, Archbishop now Archbishop, we will talk about time for mass. Say time for mass. You know if you go for another man in your own territory, go put your power on for the so what do I mean? I say if Archbishop for uh, Douala, he come on uh, he come for Boya. And we give a take mass. I don't call him he can take some mass. When he come for here, he know if he wear a palum for here. Because he no get power over this diocese. But now uh, Archbishop for Douala, but you know if you wear a palum during mass for here. Palum they wear now only for time for mass so the five archbishops who get out of Cameroon all and get their pallium them we don't feel where I'm within their territory who side with and get jurisdiction out of their jurisdiction the movie well I'm again but you know take their their authority like archbishop the archbishop but when it comes for mass they're not gonna be able for use the pallium for day they also ask about somebody or really Danny Wade or really did 35 years old. Would I be eligible? The condition I say it must be 35 years old. And the condition for make somebody a bishop and I say it must be five years like father. So he never he don't be 35 years old. They never be five years like father. So if bishop for be bishop, you be don't do five years like father. Then for also mean I'm be administrator, you suppose don't be five years too. Yeah, if you want to make you bishop, you must don't be thirty-five years too. So even this person he qualify for be bishop for ish. But for experience in ministry, he no qualify. Yes. In the absence of a bishop, um, uh, an administrator for the diocese, administer sacraments like ordination and the proper person for ordain father for any diocese, not the bishop for that diocese. Not the bishop for that diocese. And uh, when you get a situation, sometimes the day, and then it happens mostly, even if we for Africa here yeah, or for Cameroon, where they see some bishop, they invite some cardinal who can do ordination. We invite another bishop, make and do When I be auxiliary bishop of Bamenda, uh, the bishop of Ngaoundere, be invite me, Mark and Odin, he father them. The dick is the one be father, he invite me. I go Ngaoundere, I do the ordination. He says, I be daddy. He be decide for so invite me, make a can do one. He get right to do that one. But strictly speaking, now you for your diocese, you give a do. Your ordination. You don't give a call another person, make an ordain for you. And uh, I don't test some of the different kind of names of the call and the auxiliary bishop. They ordained me on the 25th of March 2017, like bishop. The very next week, I ordained Father them. And I don't talk, say, I don't, for Bamenda. Most of the ordination I may be doing for the three years who are there for day, whether I'm not in them, whether I'm not father them, I just say make a do them because if you don't tire too, it will not be too strong. I remember some of the on stories I go for Boston. I meet auxiliary, auxiliary bishop for the way. He don't do auxiliary bishop more than 10 years. Tell me how they talk as I ordain. He said, Master, how you manage? Say, since we be auxiliary bishop, never ordain one person. So, <laughs> What it means say he own the carrying away day for day, he never give the opportunity for ordain. Carrying a big year, but because now the proper right for carrying of ordain, because now he be the rightful person, now why we carrying a day ordination, I be 100% correct. So if I get ordination for Boya, now me I give a do my ordination. If I decide for one reason or the other, for call nuns, if I can do them, that one I'm a good heart. But the normal thing that say you where you be the bishop of the diocese, now you carry on the ordination way they for inside your diocese. Yes, we don't talk about this whole aspect for impeded see. 
Mo yo give example. On Wednesday, I'd go for Ikata. For come back for Thursday, I'd go Bafia. To just imagine, say we need to go up. No? We just imagine, say I go for Ikata, I come back. Thursday, I go for Bafia, then kidnap me. Take me for unknown destination. I know we communicate with any person. Then take my phone, them. Everything. Keep me for inside bush. Let them down without father, never man for how many months. If they keep me so, why well, never communicate with anybody back for diocese? That see it be impeded. I think that would mean. Now, why that would the talk now I say, if I be a uh, coadjutor bishop, you go to the local diocese, or if I be a uh, auxiliary bishop, you go to the local diocese. Or vicar general, or father, then we choose member of the consultors, choose on one person for the local diet. Because never leave the diet, so no. So, what he talks to the CB in Peter, Mr. Bishop Dede, but that bishop, no, if he communicate with the diocese. So, for making me things about the diocese, what can find, you know, the other people, the way church he talk, the V, the local things, the way they do for diocese. Until when he go come. And if they keep me for the day, then they see now don't be vacant. Me now say, then get for, get the diocese administrator for the local time before they appoint new bishop for Boya. Be clear. All right. And then, uh, when an apostolic administrator is appointed to a particular diocese when he is already an existing bishop in another diocese. Is he permitted to hold his cruise here facing the Christians or backing the Christians in the diocese where he is administrator? Does he live there or what? Uh, a bishop, when you are appointed an apostolic administrator, even in the Roman Missa, they call you, your name is called, which means that you are like, you are the sitting bishop. So, an apostolic administrator, we take the case of, say, the bishop of Bafang, Abraham Kome, who was made the apostolic administrator of the diocese of Bafia, when the bishop there was, was uh, found dead, and all the rest. He was leaving uh, Bafang to go to Bafia, when he's presiding, the cruise yeah, that those are his people. He's a bishop. Those are his people. He holds the cruise yeah, facing the people. He has been given the power to take over the care of the people in the name of the Holy Father. He was not staying there. He was staying in Bafang and going and coming. But he appointed a vicar general. They appointed people there who help as far as the administration of the diocese is concerned. And they give him feedback. And he arranged, he had times to go there for ordination, to have meetings, to do pastoral visit, and all the rest. So if you are a bishop in a diocese, and you are appointed, then you leave your diocese, you go and do the work, and you come back. Which is different from my own case. I was appointed, and my letter told me that immediately I should leave Bamenda and go to Boya. And I left Bamenda, and I came to Boya. Si oui, un prêtre peut être apostolique vu que nous voyons tous les temps le Saint-Père nommer un autre évêque à ce poste, exemple le diocèse de Yokakuma. Deuxième question, le second cas peut avoir, peut on avoir deux administrateurs apostoliques dans un diocèse, euh, plus que depuis la résignation au Nigeria de son éminence, Pita ou pas le du diocèse de Ayare. Euh, le Saint-Père a nommé le métropolitain de la province et après son, son auxiliaire. Troisième question, comment le diocèse de Ayara a été dirigé dans, 
dans les prêtres de ce diocèse avant de refuser de faire obéissance à leur évêque. Merci. This is from Tima Mouka. There is another question. Good morning, Ms. Lordship Michael Bibi. Uh, thank, thanks for the teachings you give us every Monday and sorry for asking the questions out of today's topic. My question is about the Lord's Prayer. Why during the Mass uh, we end it for thy kingdom call, uh, the power and the glory forever and ever. But out of Mass we don't say it. We end with but deliver us from evil. This is from Eliora Dian from Pumba. And there is another question. Good afternoon, my Lord Bishop. Thank you for the teachings of today. I have just one question I need to be clarified. What is the meaning of the sign when we kiss our thumb and make the little sign of the cross on the forehead and lips and chest before the priest starts reading the gospel? This is from Jerry writing from Abu Dhabi. And one of the last questions, my Lord, in one of your presentations, you mentioned that my Lord, in one of your presentations, you mentioned that to be appointed a bishop, you must not be below 35 years old. But Father Francis Arinze of Nigeria was appointed bishop when he was just 32. How can you explain this? This is from Vukwisi Patrick from Bamenda. Okay, thank you for the series of uh, questions that we have asked. Uh, as far as the dioceses are concerned, we have mentioned very clearly that the nuncio is the one representing the Holy Father in any nation. So it's like the ambassador of the Holy Father to Cameroon. So anything that we need to send to the Holy Father, it passes through his office. If you have any issues that you need to send, it passes through the nuncio. And if you send straight to the Vatican, they will send it back to the nuncio because he's the one who advised the Holy Father as far as the particular issue is concerned. But that said, we are all in collegiality with the Holy Father. If I am in Rome and I decide to, and I meet with the Holy Father, I can discuss with him directly about certain issues about life in Boya Diocese. It doesn't mean that we are in a watertight compartment that you can never talk to the Holy Father directly. No. There may be issues also that you want to address directly or straight to the Holy Father without passing through the nuncio. That is still possible. But under normal circumstances, if there are issues concerning the diocese and all the rest, you have to share with the nuncio, you have to talk with the nuncio, and normally the nuncio takes all those things and sends. And anything that leaves the Vatican to come to any diocese in Cameroon goes to the nuncio. And the nuncio sends to the diocese. That is a traffic way. But as I mentioned, you know, the metropolitan is, in, is a person in charge of the ecclesiastical province. It doesn't also mean that if I have issues here, I will go and give by the metropolitan to go and give the nuncio. No, I go straight to see the nuncio. If there are issues that we need to discuss with the metropolitan, we discuss with the metropolitan. I think it's important for us to note that. And then, of course, uh, the whole aspect, yeah, Kekan Labakia, the Mande, the problem, the administrator apostolique, administrator diocesan. L'administrateur diocesan, on nomme ça localement. Mais l'administrateur apostolique, c'est le saint sèche qui nomme celui qui doit être l'administrateur apostolique. Parce que celui qui est administrateur apostolique, il travaille au nom de Saint-Père. 
avec instruction que le Saint-Père lui a donné. Donc, Tiban Moukam, la différence, donc, c'est que les gens qui sont nommés comme administrateurs diocésains par le prêtre qui sont là-bas au diocèse ou bien par le métropolitain, quand on le nomme comme ça, ils travaillent avec certaines euh, lois et certaines restrictions dans le diocèse. Mais avec l'administrateur apostolique que le Saint-Père nomme, quand même, souvent, on lui donne certaines instructions à travailler en préparant pour, pour leur évêque. Et la situation de diocèse de, 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 de Nigérienne que tu viens de rappeler, le moment où le prêtre a refusé le nouveau évêque, il y avait quelqu'un qu'on a choisi pour regarder les choses. Je n'ai pas le détail, mais normalement dans un diocèse comme ça, il y aura peut-être un autre évêque qu'on attache là-bas ou bien un, 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 un administrateur diocésain pour gérer, gérer les choses de cette diocèse. About the Lord's Prayer, why do we end we deliver us from evil out of the mass? Why do we end out of the mass without saying they deliver us from evil? But during the mass, we say they deliver us from evil. I just grabbed my Bible there and I want to let us know that as far as the Lord's Prayer is concerned, the shorter version. In the Gospel of Luke, I think it's chapter 11, 1 to 4. And the longer version in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, from uh, verse 9 following, it is very clear there. There is no deliver us, Lord, from every evil and all the rest. And that is one of the difference we have with some of the Protestant churches because when they say the Lord's Prayer, they continue with that doxology that is found in the Mass. That doxology was added within the context of the Mass. But as far as the Lord's Prayer itself is concerned, if you read the Lord's Prayer, which I can read here, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 following, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's the Lord's Prayer in the scripture with seven petitions. The one in the Gospel of Luke 11, 1 to 4 has five petitions. And there is no deliver us, Lord, from every evil and all the rest. That one was part of the Mass that eventually, I don't know how he found himself to be part of the Lord's Prayer that uh, is being used by some of the Protestant churches today. So what we are doing when we are celebrating the liturgy, that uh, section of embolism comes up with the deliver us Lord from every evil. But when we say they are Father, strictly according to what is presented in the scriptures, when we say they are Father, we sing it or we recite it, we do not need to say they deliver us because it's not part of the Lord's prayer. When we kiss our tongue and make the sign of the cross on the forehead and the mouth and our chest, what is the significance? The first is that we are not supposed to touch our tongue in, on our lips. The church doesn't give provision for that. Some people, when the gospel is introduced, they read from the Holy Gospel according to John. We go and we suck our tongue, then we sign ourselves. There's no way nowhere in the general instruction to the Roman Misa that we should take our thumb and put on our there's nowhere so you should never do that it's not correct but the church says that when that uh, introduction is given to the gospel and we are giving the response we sign our forehead we sign our mouth and we sign our chest so that we should be able to listen understand the word of God we should be able to teach that word to others and we should be able to keep the word also in our heart. That is the reason 
while we sign ourselves with the sign of the cross. And uh, I want to remind our audience that taking your thumb and putting it on your tongue and rubbing your forehead and your mouth and your chest is not done. Yes, the, uh, there's a question here about uh, see a follow-up of the one in French. Uh, par rapport à Yokaduma. Yes, the, uh, the par rapport à Yokaduma. Uh, why does the Holy Father, pourquoi le, le Saint Père a nommé l'administrateur apostolique au cas de Yokaduma. Et on a déjà expliqué, euh, on a déjà expliqué que par rapport au administrateur diocésain, ça se donne localement. Par rapport à l'administrateur apostolique, c'est le Saint-Père qui nomme. Et le cas de Yokaduma, Monseigneur Paul Lonsi était l'évêque de Yokaduma. On l'a nommé comme évêque de Bafoussam et en même temps comme administrateur apostolique de Yokaduma. Donc, c'est le Saint-Père qui lui a nommé. Ça veut dire que comme évêque de Bafoussam, il reste à Bafoussam, mais de temps en temps, il part à Yokaduma pour continuer à faire le travail qu'il doit faire là-bas. Il va continuer à faire cela jusqu'à quand on va nommer l'évêque de Yokaduma. Et quand on nomme l'évêque de Yokaduma, il ne va plus continuer à travailler là-bas comme administrateur apostolique. Can there be two apostolic administrators in one diocese? No. There can only be one apostolic administrator. Then with the diocese of I had I think we've answered uh, we've answered this already. So that said, I think we are we are done with the questions that uh, come on. We want to apologize for those who still have questions. We are actually running out of time. So you can just bring your question for next session. You write to us via SMS or WhatsApp on the numbers which you find on your screen. We want to thank his Lord Bishop for today's catechesis. Thank you, dear TV friend, dear radio friend, dear brothers and sisters in Christ for your time today. Just a reminder, a replay of today's edition of Know Your Faith will be yours from 9 p.m. and on Saturday at exactly 7 a.m.